Now then, David Cameron called the election result the sweetest victory of all, but let's not forget that he has, say, wafer-thin majority, which means he's going to have to listen very, very carefully indeed to all of his backbenchers. Well, one of those is the former Cabinet Minister, Owen Paterson, and he joins me now from Ellesmere in Shropshire. And a very good morning to you, Mr Paterson. Well, uh, as I say, uh, he's got a wafer-thin majority, you know that uh, very well, and uh, therefore he has to keep the party in line. One way of doing that, as he uh, decides on the makeup of his government, is he's got a, a lot more jobs to hand around than he did uh, when you were in coalition. Uh, well, good morning. Uh, first thing to state is this is a remarkable victory, completely confounded but to the whole political establishment, the pollsters and the press. And it's a real victory for conservatism. Uh, offering lower taxes, less regulation, getting people back into work, welfare reform, more choice in education, health, has really worked. And I think what we want to do is to push on in this government, make sure there is a broad spread across the ministries. It's great that we can get uh, really vital ministries back like energy, where we've frankly got a disastrous long-term energy policy with, led by the Liberal Democrats, where we have a real problem the lights might go out. Uh, it's a really, really great opportunity now to get common sense Conservative ministers in there and really push on over the next five years and really consolidate on this tremendous victory. And how does he push on and bring common sense into relations with Europe that will uh, satisfy people like you and many others in the Conservative Party? Well, I think we've got to give him the time and the space, as I said in the Sunday Times today, to, to, to push ahead with his idea that he can get what we want through a renegotiation. We have to let him have a real crack at it. I, don't forget, I was very closely involved in all the negotiations on CAP reform. We'd never have got it through. Even on that last night when I was speaking to my best Bavarian in the German offices, we worked very closely with the Germans. I think there's a real will on their behalf to come to an agreement. There's very broad agreement, I think, in Britain that they, we voted to join a market. All this rubbish, the EU and the three million jobs, it's the market that delivers what I suspect are many more than three million jobs. There's five million jobs in Europe depend on trade with us. It's the trade we want. And they're going to have to leave us and set up a new country in order to fix the horrors of the Eurozone, in order they can transfer funds legally between the wealth creating areas like southern Germany, southern Holland, down to the difficult areas, southern Spain and Italy. So they're going to leave us and effectively form a new country. We have a great opportunity to have a completely new arrangement based around the market we can withdraw from the political and the judicial arrangements. Well, we've got to give the Prime Minister time. He's got to set out his vision. I mean, I have a tremendously optimistic vision of where we could be, regaining our role on those really important international bodies that ultimately decide regulation. But, but the point let is... Let's have a fair crack and give yeah. him time. Well, that's the point, though, isn't it, Mr Patterson? If uh, his vision doesn't uh, coincide with your vision and others' vision, and uh, he can't do it in the time available, we, he's got to hold that referendum before the, the end of... 2017 and you know a lot of parallels have been drawn with 1992 from the point of view of your party the surprise election victory but of course we know what then happened to John Major is his so-called awkward squad over Europe in the end tore the party apart well I know this is the press narrative you're all hoping is going to happen I think we wish the Prime Minister well don't forget our European the 27 partners will have seen this they'll have seen a very very resounding statement by the British people to back the Prime Minister's programme. He, go, he goes there with a real mandate, and I think we've got to give him the time and space to deliver. There's very broad agreement across the Tory party, and as, as we've seen, there is broad agreement with the small C Conservatives who've been completely ignored by the metropolitan media and the pollsters and spoke up. They have very broad agreement for moving towards a, an arrangement where we enjoy the benefits of the single market, but we're not bossed around by the political and judicial arrangements. Every day in DEFRA, when I was doing it, I had to make judgments as to how far we could push a decision in case we got infringements and infractions and ultimately fines from the European Union. We are going to be the, we just overtaken France, we're the fifth biggest economy in the world. We can run our own show and we can get back on those world bodies and really re-galvanise world free trade because the lack of free trade and the fact that stalled is causing these horrendous problems in very unstable parts of the world, like southern, Af middle and southern and northern Africa. So I see a really positive role for us, and we've got to give the Prime Minister, with his massive mandate, the very best shots to deliver. Are you available to um, make these arguments back in government, if you were asked? <laughs> I think, I think I've, that is entirely down to the Prime Minister, who's making his choices as we speak. But I've been re-elected here, 
uh, with an increased majority. Uh, I'm delighted to say this part of the world is all blue for the first time since 1970. And I'll be playing my full role representing small C Conservatives and their views in the new Parliament. But willing to serve if required. Yeah, obviously, yes. I mean, everyone's, everyone would. We, wa we want this government to succeed at last. We've got rid of the ball and chain of the Lib Dems. We can crack on with a really positive common sense program. So we need to deliver the boundary changes. We've been held back by this nonsense that you know, John Major got 14.1 million votes and a majority of 21. Tony Blair got 13 and a half and got a majority of 179. We've got to even that out. Uh, we've got to resolve the issues of English votes for English laws. And we've got to obviously work closely with the Scots, make them feel welcome in the union. And my belief is on the Scottish issue, uh, they should be responsible for raising the money that they spend. And suddenly you change the dynamic. We've got a great leader of the, Scot of the Scottish Conservative Party. Suddenly you have competition in Scotland between parties to deliver lower taxes and better service. So, I mean, we're hearing from uh, Chris Grayling, who's going to be, uh, we understand, looking after those, uh, those issues uh, concerning Scotland, that uh, Scotland should have the strongest devolved powers of any on earth. How far can that go? Well, I just referring back to my previous comments, the moment, I knew all along that this devolution settlement was totally lopsided and asymmetrical. And behind me, that view behind you is Wales. Uh, there are decisions made on health in Wales by a bad Labour government in Cardiff, right up here affecting me in North Shropshire, and I can do nothing about it. We always knew this was asymmetrical, and what's happened is the Scottish referendum has woken the English up to that. And the, the Scots cannot treat England as some piggy bank which can be raided so that excessive amounts of money are taken from England without responsibility. And the Scots can, can run around promising free health care, free this, free holidays in Lanzarote, and expect the English to pay. There has to be a resolution. So English matters have to be decided by English MPs. And the fair thing is to give the Scots real responsibility. I would be happy to see them raising the money that they spend. And then you, you re-establish that link between how you vote. You'd think really carefully in Scotland. Are you going to vote for effectively a Marxist SNP? Or would you vote for a prudent Scottish Conservative Party offering lower taxes and better service? And suddenly you change the whole dynamic of... Uh, politics of Scotland within the UK. OK, Mr Patterson, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, Owen Patterson, there in Ellesmere in Shropshire. Now, uh